everybody! Welcome back to the Wattpad Book Club. My name is Phoenix, and once again, I am joined with Jolene on this fabulous Sunday. <laughs> Hello! I think about what day it was. Well, isn't this gonna be uploaded on a different day? Yeah, I mean, these usually go up Tuesdays and Thursdays. So, it Tuesday? was a Sunday. <laughs> oh no, Sundays exist. Anyway. <laughs> I mean, I guess. I mean, I think I did the same shit with Minho, like Saturday. You know, like, this <laughs> shit ain't going up close to a Saturday. <laughs> but uh, the, the wheel has have, was spun, and it spun did, and it landed on a Zoro X reader. Which. <laughs> what was it? Were we supposed to do this Friday? <laughs> we were supposed to do this Friday, but yeah. then the fic I had chosen has, like, the author's notes like do not repost, and I'm just like I didn't see that till we started recording. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I, I caught that really luckily. Yeah, good thing we didn't like it halfway through, and you're like, uh, well, we. Can't, I'm sorry, we can't use any of this. Unless we didn't like yeah. get done with it, then you looked at it and you're like, gosh, could you imagine? Yeah, because I usually skip the author's notes, Wait. so thank God you looked at it. <laughs> Can, can we can we can we use this one like for real? Hold yeah, on. Yeah, I mean, oh, watch us go into it. Well, let me show it off. It's just I okay, love yeah. this author. It doesn't have anything. Yeah, I love this author. Not. They made a Sanji X reader and a live X reader that I really like. And when they announced that they were doing a Zoro one, I'm like, damn, you're doing all my favorite boys right now. You're killing me. I'm excited. I love I love I love Zoro, but yeah. I'm also horrifically nervous <laughs> don't be afraid just take my hand we'll make it through this i i literally lived in fear forever <laughs> just me happy just for lighting. <laughs> but the big shout out to the scarlet skies 14 i love you dog i think they follow me <laughs> oh yeah i start following them I, I give them a couple comments and like bro this this should say my marriage <laughs> Saved your marriage. I'm like, yo, I'm eating good tonight. Like, I think one of the, the law ones uploaded it, and I really love the chapter. I'm like, man, I'm eating good today. It's like a comment. Man, if I, wanted, I love if I needed to shake a hand of someone, it would be this person. But to, but to go, go follow this author, go read their other shit. It's super good. <laughs> but, uh, alright. Enough about a promotion. We gotta we read. Flipping yeah, well, hold on. We gotta read the description and see what we're getting ourselves oh, into. Yeah, how dare you jump the gun? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's see. The description reads I love you, thorns and all. Zoro X Reader. Rose Day, I can't pronounce that, is one of the highest classes of in the world. As a celestial dragon, she is all that she could ever ask for. That is until she met her heinous betrayal. Not wanting to marry the horrible man, she was banished from Mary Rose. I can't actually pronounce that. It's Mary something. What? I'm sorry, I had a sneeze. Oh. <laughs> it was shipped up her royal name. With nowhere else to go, she stumbles from bar to bar, drinking away her sorrows until she meets the man that will show her what it means to truly live. They do not own the story of One Piece. <laughs> But yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, start reading. And, and the story is still fairly new. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah, with yeah. some consistent uploading, this book will be finished. Yeah, they're a good writer. I love them. <laughs> Alright, I'm guessing this this is our OC right here. The red hair lady. So, I, we actually don't need to come up with a, our stupid name for our character, because her name is Rose. Yeah, Yay! Yeah, we don't have to subject her, so, like, calling her, like, no name. Yeah, we don't have to call her, like, Frying Pan. <laughs> Alright, <laughs> chapter one, society is a paradox. Alright, I don't actually- I had the Poro th thing that you, you gave me. The what? You left the por Polaroid uh, picture on my on my, on my desk. Oh, is it the one where we try to take a picture of the monitor? Yeah, because my monitor background is lost. <laughs> she tried to take a picture of it, but now it's just a black screen. 
Yeah, because I forgot reflection of light and such. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes, bro, you gotta reflect on your own reflection and ask yourself the question. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna flip this. You wanna be the side that has the picture or the back side that says instant full full film? I would like to be the instant full film. Okay. Eh. Alright, you're reading, dog. Okay, I, I mean, that works. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I guess I'll read. <laughs> Drifting the seas of the east blue, the straw hat pirates sat together all looking off into the night sky. The stars twinkled like glitter, the breeze crisp and cool against their cheeks. Look, a shooting star, Luffy shouted with excitement. Wow. <laughs> Jeff, I'm sorry, I don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> wow. That's great. <laughs> Chopper, looked, <laughs> Chopper looked up in the sky with stars in her eyes. So cool. It was. It is a very beautiful night. The new recruit known as Nico Robin spoke up, crossing her arms against her abdomen to stay warm. As the others continued to stargaze, the ship's swordsman sat quietly at the staircase on careful watch. He was still skeptical about the new crewmate due to her trying to kill them back in Alabasta. Maybe the crew was warming up to her, but he wasn't about to let his guard down just yet. Hey guys, Lan Ho! Usopp yelled from the crow's nest, holding a set of binoculars. That's gotta be Jaya, Nami ran to the barrier, anxious to see the island. Its island glistened in the distance, city lights sparkling on the horizon. Yes, finally, I could do some shopping. We hope we can find some more information about this island in the sky, too, Robin smiled. Luffy stretched his arms and, the slingsh and slingshot himself to this bows the bowsprit. Awesome, it looks like a cluster of stars, don't you think? Let's go, he exclaimed with a bright smile. Good, I could finally get some booze. <laughs> Zoro grumbled, grumbled under his breath. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, the islands in the south are warm, and their heads get really hot. They grow a pineapple. They grow a coconut. They're all, they're all morons. A young woman <laughs> stumbled down. <laughs> I'm no. I, I think she's drunk. <laughs> Yeah, I think she's. Um, I mean, yeah. this is how I am when I when I get like drunk, <laughs> like tipsy. I get, I make no sense sober, you. let alone. Could could you drink a lot? I uh, I could probably have probably three smirnoffs before I get tipsy. Three what? Smirnoffs. Oh, okay. I was <laughs> like, I don't know what that is. Is that like a mixed beverage? But I know what you're talking it's about. It's like a now. malt beverage. I love malt beverages. A malt liqueur. <laughs> a young woman stumbled down the dirt to the streets of Mock Town, singing a nonsensical song to herself. She had spent the night indulging in whiskey and sake and searching for a good time. She had been kicked out for scaring some of the customers off. Haha. -ha. Those guys were all, <laughs> were all morons. She laughed, talking to the stars above. What a bunch of scaredy cats. You, you try to have a chat with a ghost and suddenly they think it's a poltergeist. Jeez. They did overreact a little, didn't they? A disembodied voice replied. To be fair, though, you look totally ridiculous right now. Oh, shut up. Don't ruin the night for me, um... What'd you say your name was? Are you kidding me? The voice shouted angrily. Just how drunk are you? Not enough, apparently, because I can still hear you. The lady shouted back into the air. Hey, get away from my shop, crazy woman. You're scaring away customers. A shopkeeper yelled at the intoxicated woman. That was talking loudly to herself. I don't give a shit about your damn customers, she retorted, raising a middle finger. There's none I see around to scare away anyway. Why you? <laughs> the shopkeeper chuckled, a chucked a bottle straight at the woman, but she vanished but was just before impact. The man froze, slack jawed at just what happened. What? In a hotel in town. Meet the dark me at the hotel. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, people. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll put him back. <laughs> a dark, empty room was suddenly filled with laughter as Mina appeared out of thin air. She crump, clumsily stumbled across the room and fell and collapsed into bed. You idiot, you're gonna get yourself killed if you keep acting like this. The voice said in an upset tone. Oh yeah? Your name is Frey. <laughs> she rolled around, unable to stop laughing. I'm serious, Rose. You're unwell. Frey... 
The woman calmed down, wiping a tear from her eye. If a normal person were to see this scene, they would only be able to see one person in the room, a young lady with flushed cheeks and flowing scarlet hair talking to herself into the darkness. How do you know I'm not crazy already? What if I never did eat that fruit? What if all you... What if all you are are voices in my head, hmm? Against most beliefs, there was in fact someone else in the room with Rose. Just not physically. I think you are crazy, but not psychotic quite yet. Frey said, shaking her head, sitting in a chair across the room. I'm worried you're on the borderline, though. You need to stop drinking so much. Rose rested her hand against her face and closed her eyes. She floated in her mind space for a moment, letting the emptiness give her a sense of relaxation. If I stop, then my mind will fill up again. I can't stand this world, Frey. Do you ever think about it? Just how messed up this world is? Well, I mean, I've had all the time in the world to think about it. So yes, I have. Frey sighed. Rose rolled over to his side and faced her friend, hazel eyes glowing in the dark. Do you ever think about the function of society? Probably not. Not, I, but I don't blame you. It's a complicated thing. A complicated, boring thing. We're really deeply thinking tonight, aren't we? The apparition I rolled. Oh boy. Seriously though, let me say this as someone who used to be a fucking celestial dragon. Rose set up. The room lagging behind her drunk vision. Society is like a paradox. You cannot reach for a better society without recognizing first the society you live in is shit. The two go hand in hand. Remove imperfection from the body and one discovers the perfect recipe for for what does not exist for the most part in the human universe. I read that from a book years ago. Basically, you can't have perfection without the imperfect, so a perfect world is simply not possible. Rose's eyes became heavy as she continued to speak with her speak her slurred nonsense. Those those ones who claim to be perfect need the imperfect to exist. That's why they become villains, and that's when they banish their only daughter to leave to die, so they can keep their precious status. Rose, you really need to shut up now. Frey floated. <laughs> I'm sorry, that is so funny. <laughs> you're just like you're like you're trying to. Keep- trying to relax your friend as they're spewing philosophical nonsense and they're like shut your mouth <laughs> you're like bitch shut up go to sleep <laughs> yourself. i'm pray i would do that respectfully shut up frey floated over to her mortal friend by the time she had reached her she'd already fallen asleep frey gazed at the sad image of the woman passed out in bed and she couldn't help but reflect on her crazy words is it a cruel reality huh you spout that crap like I don't already know. How do you think I ended up dead, you idiot? Frey sighed and slowly drifted to the nearby window. Even at this late hour, the streets were still lively with people dancing and drinking the night away. You people with your working bodies. It's appalling to watch them all destroy themselves like you, Rose. Though, I understand, I suppose. Frey took one look at the sleeping one more look at the sleep sleeping woman and frowned. I think I'm gonna go now. Thanks for keeping me company tonight. It was nice to feel alive again for at least a little while. Maybe I'll see you again sometime. But please don't let it be anytime soon. The young woman in an old dress stained with blood smiled softly and her shape began to dissolve and fade away into the moonlight. Soon, Rose was truly by herself once again. The quote is by Tobin Cybers. There we go. Or a book that's from them. Unless that's just like a, a super smart dude that like what they called him? A philosopher? Yes, a ph- <laughs> super smart dude. A super smart dude. Yeah, super Jeez. smart man. <laughs> now I can't say it. Alright, it's it's a super smart guy. Uh he was a professor of English language and literature. And a professor of art and design at the University of Michigan, where he was co-chair of the initial things. Yeah, he's a disability studies advocate. Gotcha. Okay. He's written a, a whole lot of books. Hmm. Ranging from 1980, the, the early 1980s to, I think the most recent one was in 2010. Did he stop writing because he like died or something? Or I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure he's dead. Oh, yeah, damn. he died in two. He died in 2015. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Did you... Nah. 
<laughs> but damn, not another brilliant mind gone with the wind. Alright, next part. Oh my god, Zoro. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I really like this. I really like this book so far. Oh, yes! I got another person hooked. Now I gotta get you hooked on Passion of a Pirate. It's only 200 No, I can't do it! <laughs> it's too long! Which is the exact thing I said when I said I wouldn't watch One Piece. Yeah. So, I have a little bit of hope, but not a lot. Maybe I can get you to read this person's Lawlex reader that they have. I think that it's more likely. Yeah. Yeah, win. Win. <laughs> I mean, it's a little easier to read Wattpad at work than AO3. Yeah. Because I could flip the... Well, not because I could flip the thing. It's because I could auto-scroll. Gotcha, yeah. Alright, chapter two. Morals are subjective. Alright. Let me scoot! Alright. Knock, knock. Hey, miss. You've been ordered to leave the hotel immediately. A booming voice shouted from beyond the hotel door, waking the hungover redhead. She rolled over and covered her head with the pillow. Go away, she groaned, her head throbbing. You need to pack up and leave. The, the Bellamy pirates have rented the entire place out for their crew. I'm not going anywhere until I spent all the time I paid for. Now get lost. Rose chucked the pillow as she clutched, clutched over her head hard enough to rattle the door and attempt to scare off the staff. She could hardly get her eyes to open yet. Why was she dealing with this crab already so early in the morning? Listen, the voice spoke. I'm saving this to save your neck. If you don't leave, they will kill you. So get out before you get hurt. Beyond the door, a mustachio bellboy stood at attention, barely keeping it together as he shook in his boots. He grew nervous from hearing no response, as his life was on the line as well. Miss... His fist quivered in hesitation before knocking once more, but a brisk chill suddenly traveled down his spine. Just tell me, who are these beef and cheese pirates think that think they can just ruin my sleep? The stone-cold voice spoke from behind him, making the poor bell bellhop okay, bell scream and jump so high he almost hit the ceiling. As he crashed to the floor, Rose stood against the- wait- I can I can do this. <laughs> Breathing's hard when you're tipsy. <laughs> do you need me to keep reading? No, I can do it. I just stumble over my words sometimes. As he crashed to the floor, Rose stood standing against her hip with her arms crossed, looming over him with an ambient. Yeah, that way. <laughs> Malevolent. Malevolent or <laughs> piercing. <laughs> Piercing eyes cut through the man in, in anger, making him gulp and shiver. It, it's felony pirates, actually. Uh, I don't care what they call themselves. Rose snatched the man's coat collar with nimble and strong fingers and pulled him to attention. I want to speak to them now. The captain just left and went to town. Said something about grabbing a drink and gambling somewhere. He waved his hands for mercy and eventually was dropped back to the floor. Thanks for the tip. Here's here's one for your troubles. Rose smiled smugly, flicking a shiny coin at the bellhop, rubbing his back behind in pain from the fall. The coin fell perfectly in his lap and he looked at it, stunned. I think I'm gonna pay this boy <laughs> baloney guy a, a visit. The sun glowed over the red roofs of the town buildings. It was late morning as Rose paced casually down the street with her hands in her pockets, doing her best to avoid the chattering people around her. Mocktown on the surface was a bright-looking port city. One can mistake this place as a lavish vacation hotspot due to its lush palm trees and blossoming businesses, giving it the feel of a resort. The true source of Mocktown's economy was, in actuality, the money that pirates went, spent vigorously all around town. Its population mainly consisted of pirates competing with one another for territory, money, or purely for sport. Very often, the streets are loud with shattering glasses or barrels bustling over the pirates' heads. What? Wait, I get ruffian. Ruffian, <laughs> ruffian fist fights took over the alleys, battling it out or causing a riot. Rose laid her head low, not to cause any attention. This really was an annoying convenience. How could they just kick her out like that after she paid a spay for two more nights? Sure, she should have flashed the. Sure, she could have flashed the celestial dragon card, but that wasn't 
that was not something she considered to identify as any longer, not after how they treated her. Speaking of causing a riot, Hey lady, a husk voice spoke, suddenly spoke from behind Rose, stopping her in her tracks. A band of pirate thieves had formed a circle around the unfazed woman in black, trapping her within, with, trapping her with pointed blades. The man who appeared to be the leader approached her with a disgusted smile that had missing teeth. Can I help you? I'm busy, she huffed. She had enough of weirdos stopping her in the middle of the street for one day. A couple of whistles and wolf howls were heard among the thieves. Great, more imbeciles, Rose thought. What's the beauty like you do on the side of town? The leader asked. You say that like there's a good side of town. If that's true, please enlighten me. Otherwise, I don't have time to chat. Rose spoke sarcastically and began to walk, a walk again, despite the, the barrier of burly men. Whoa, whoa there, what's the rush? The leader dropped a heavy arm around Rose's neck, trying to be, what, chummy? Yeah, I guess chummy. Chum yeah, chummy. Put down words that Phoenix can pronounce. <laughs> Stopping her in her tracks. Rose could smell the booze and body odor burning her nostrils, making her cringe. Gross. The woman's eyes shaded over. Your irritation was growing dangerously high. You have exactly five seconds to get off of me before I introduce your face to the dirt. Rose responded menacingly. All events leading up to this point have finally made her frustration peak. Ooh, a feisty one. The group laughed along with their master. Or? Say, why don't you come with this? I'll treat you to a drink, he winked, raising a blade to her neck. Three. It's dangerous out here. Let me show you a good time. Two. One. The woman lost her patience and grabbed hold of the... Th the thug's head in a death grip, slamming him into the ground enough to gouge a crater in the walkway. The man's lackeys stood speechless at the sight of their leader being defeated so quickly. Pedestrians surrounding the scene also stopped in awe at the sudden violence. Rose brushed the dirt off her hands. Anyone else going to get in my way today, or am I going to be planting more dumbass trees in the ground? Her eyes started glowing in a in a frightening shade of red, thieves started to run for their lives, but some, some's feet began to levitate off the ground, leaving them to bail helplessly in the air. Something had grabbed a hold of their shirt collars. Hey, well I got you. Do you men know, in, know where I could find a man named Bony Meat? A voice spoke from behind them. The men shouted in horror, too scared to give an answer. Geesh, you guys are useless, he sighed. Dropping the men care carelessly, making them crash into the ground below. Her body suddenly appeared from thin air, floating above them, crossing her arms in disbelief as the rest of the thieves scurried away. Oh, so much for not drawing attention. Bastards. Yeah, you know, why can't I just deck? I'm gonna do that to people that annoy me. <laughs> just go bop. their head into the ground or just float them until they cry? I don't know, I feel like the whole slamming thing, because it makes me, like, feel like I have, like, super strength and just go bonk. We just have to train- you just gotta train for a thousand years. I don't have a thousand. Barely a hundred. I don't know. train every day for ten years. What's the- I can do what the- like, the- the One Punch Man does, where he does, like, of, like, a hundred of each kind of exercise, and he eats a banana, and then he can punch anything and kill it. Well, we gotta do that for a couple years. Aw, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, first, first step is to shave my head, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, your hair falls out once you've achieved. You've achieved true strength. Oh, okay, that, that, that's right. My apologies. If I shave my head, then I'm, then I'm cheating the system. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She, she continued to float along as people stared in shock. All that commotion made her hungry. And luckily, she spotted a restaurant just across the street. Oven pies. Guess I can use a drink. As she, as she approached the entrance, she stopped and hesitated, hearing what sounded like a large crash coming from inside. There's a bar fight going on? She wondered. Not wanting to bother with any more fighting today, she used her powers to become invisible. Nux. Her eyes quickly glowed with a powerful crimson as she faded away. She snuck into the bar quietly, stumbling onto a strange scent in the bar. What's some... Mm, what? <laughs> Strange scene. 
Yeah. Puts to me as a small fry, a tall guy decorated as a regal in a regal dark blue cloak and a sh and shaggy blue sorry shaggy blonde where the fuck did I pull blue from? <laughs> shaggy blonde hair would look like a boy in his in his clutches face down in the bar, so hard it shattered. His smile reminded Rose of a hyena's. What an interesting scene. The man seemed to be in a threatening spot himself, as a sharp blade was being held a hair away from his neck by his Wait, what the fuck was I scathing? Wait, I could <laughs> scathing. Wait, a seething? Scathing. Oh scathing. <laughs> a scathing man with green hair. <laughs> Damn. Why do I suck at reading? Why don't you tell me? The sword wielder asked, taunting the hyena man. Zoro, hold on a minute. The orange haired lady waved her hands to stop the altercation. We haven't got any information from this town yet. Shut up. I'm trying to take this man up on his offer, he said to the woman. Jeez, I'll piss them off. Rose wandered from the corner of the bar, watching the scene play out. Unexpectedly, the, boys who's, the boy whose head was slammed into the bar stood up at, to his feet to, to Rose's interest. He brushed the blood off his lip. So, you ready to take me on, huh? The boy challenged. The crowd surrounding the, the men started to get riled up from the challenge. Oh, they're gonna take on Bellum. They're gonna take Bellamy on. Oh, so that's Bellamy. Rose raised an eyebrow. He doesn't look like much to me. The swordsman, on the other hand, her eyes scanned the young man's physique with a grin. He looks interesting. <laughs> Man, it must be that. It must be the green hair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. God. <laughs> Why do I sim for green hair characters so much? I don't know. Just got. <laughs> What's a plague? What? <laughs> It's a plague. Yeah, yeah, I got green hair disease, which causes me to fall in love with green hair characters in media. <laughs> it's, 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 it's not, it's, it's untreatable. There's no cure. I think it's not contagious. Yeah. Oh yeah, thank god. <laughs> what, you telling me you don't want to like every green hair character I do? No. No. Absolutely not. Not N or Zoro or like, like Dang and Rapa characters like Gwenta. No. Oh, oh my god. No. I think I'm content. Alright, you go stay over there in your corner with your shanks and ace and I'll be over here. <laughs> okay. How <laughs> dare you. Oh yeah, wait, I forgot Buggy. Wait, do you like Buggy? Eh, no. Alright, never mind then. You, you don't get buggy. <laughs> Not a clown person. That goes to the other mentally ill ladies in the back. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's keep going. <laughs> Damn, I, I don't like doing the laughs for characters. <laughs> Just <laughs> laugh. Yeah. Just laugh really loud. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that is not how we will bet anyway. Call me cackled. This isn't a fight. This is a test. Come on. Let's see how strong you are. Luffy, wait! The orange-haired girl interrupted once again, turning desperately to the man in charge of the bar. Hey, mister. We want to go to the Sky Island. Do you know anything about it? The bar fell silent. What did that chick just say? Surely she can't be serious, people mumbled. Despite the change in atmosphere, she restated her question. Like I said, do you know anything about how to get to the Sky Island? Her words were then were then pitiful cut off by obnoxious laugh obnoxious loud laughter in what why is it tripping me up? God damn it. Erupting through the throughout the bar. I don't know why, all these big words back to back, like my brain was like, nah. <laughs> the trio stared at aghast at the crowd in confusion about what was so funny. But the long post is definitely pointing to the sky, the girl shouted. She has a log post? Rose interest has in these three just keeps rising. Sky Island. How particular. Nice. Peculiar. Oh, peculiar. I got you. I, got I will you. be the night. 
Do you guys believe it's such an ancient legend that there's an island in the sky? Hanging in man snickered. Just which era are you from anyway? Unusual currents in the in Unusual currents in the Grand Line are being explained one after another. The knock-up stream is one of them. I guess you don't know if something like that even exists. The ships that fall victim to this current are pushed up high in the sky and then slammed into the ocean. Then knowing this, sailors are long, from long ago saw that the strange scene when the ships fell and imagined Sky Island taken. There must be another world in the sky. Jeez, this guy talks a lot. Rose yawned. What a buzzkill. A world in the sky sounds so much more exciting than a sea current. This makes you want to punch me more. <laughs> Bellamy continued to ramble. How foolish. All phenomenons have reason. These things that people dream about can all be explained soon. Good grief. I thought I touched you and let you join my crew at, for a new era. But you're such a delusional dumbass. He flashed his menacing grin towards the young boy in the straw hat who was clenching his fists in anger, forced to endure the man's words. Listen, the era of where pirates dreams about things are over. City of gold, city of emeralds, the big hidden treasure of One Piece. The One Piece! <laughs> those, those idiots are blinded by the dream of treasure and don't realize the treasure around them. The straw hat boy's hand finally re relaxed but stood firm. When I see idiots chasing after their dreams like that, I get disgusted. Bellman swung a fist square at the boy's face, knocking him to the floor. Luffy, the ginger woman explained in worry. Suddenly, the sound of shattering glass filled the room as a rain of liquor bottles crashed down from the boy who laid motionless on the floor, calmly staring at the ceiling, taking each blow. Bellamy's crew laughed in mockery as the, the trio's dream as they, as they hurled their drinks one after another. The whole scene was odd to Rose, other than this event being a total waste of liquor. Why didn't he just leave? She wondered. These bastards don't deserve any more of their time. What do you think he's doing? She had become too invested and now had to see how this panned out. Luffy, Zoro, forget the promise, beat him up already! The girl begged the boys. Zoro, the boy who, who must go by the name Luffy, finally spoke. Don't take them on, no matter what happens. He isn't serious, Rose pondered. Whoever Whenever to just start beating up the men there, or now to avoid seeing any more of this pitiful show. She was forced to a back, though, at the unexpected response of the green-haired swordsman. Obediently with that question, the swords returned to their sheeps, and the man took every hit after hit from the crowd of Bellamy's pirates. He stood strong like a pillar, crossing his arms unfazed by the savage actions of the thugs. The boy known as Luffy stood the same, right by his side. Never before had Rose seen anything like this. She had no idea how to feel about the scene in front of her, as the two boys proudly took their blows. Angrily? Confused? Anxious? Her fist shook at the adrenaline cursing, coursing through her vine- <laughs> Cursing through her veins! Take a sip, take a sip. Yeah, I need a sip of alcohol to me. <laughs> maybe, Dude. maybe water? Hmm? Maybe, maybe some water? Nah, the hell's fine. It has water in there. It was thrilling. She never, she had never felt her heart run in this wild in years. She wanted desperately to intervene as she watched the blood escape the, the growing number of cuts on the boys that the boys subsided, but an unexpected force was stopping her. All she could do was remain hidden in the shadows and watch it all. Why are you taking this from them? The girl with them shouted in frustration. Fight them! Just beat them up already! Ha! Ah, there's no use, lady. They're smart. They realize that their opponents are out of their league. Another crew, crewman sh shouted, laughed out. Another crewman shouted out loud. I guess he has no dignity as a captain. The Navy sure is generous these days. Putting 30 million berries to a head of a worthless ass like him. 30 million? Rose said out loud of pure shock. Him? There's no way a bounty that high in the East Blue. Who are these guys? I'm done here, Bellamy interrupted the, the brutal purge with a definite slam of his glass to the bar. A weak-looking shorty worth 30 million. I wonder what kind of man he was. This 
isn't just a letdown. It's boring. The filthy man took a large drink from a bottle and crudely spit it out and spit it in the faces of Luffy and Zoro, still remaining unfazed from the humiliation. As Bellamy ordered his men to remove the two from his sight, Luffy was hoisted by the two of Bellamy's crewmates as they were hurled straight through the window where Rose remained invisible. Without thinking, her body moved on its own and rushed in front of the window. Her breathing was yeah, her breath was blown away as the straw hat pirate crashed into her with a intense force, knocking her knocking her out of the glass window with a loud crash. Her body rolled onto the street, phasing back into the living. She coughed from the dirt that flew into her lungs as she clung onto the deep cut that she that she sustained from a shard of glass. Damn it, she huffed. The hell just happened. Miss, are you alright? Rose opened her eyes at the many staring spectators looking down at her. They must have just gathered outside after seeing all the commotion about was about inside the bar. Get the hell away from me! Rose's eyes glowed with a fearsome red as she yelled at, out with some scathing tone. The citizen gasped in fright as the woman in black floated up from the ground with a scowl on her, on her face. I had enough with this stay. All of you get out of my way! With a blast of spiritual force, the people were knocked to the ground as Rose flew away in the distance. She had enough bad luck for today, and couldn't contain her anger any longer. What was she thinking throwing her body in front of the boy like that? What possessed her to do something so stupid? Now she had Hmm? It's the Luffy effect. Yeah. You just see him once and you're like, I die for that kid. Oh my god, you're right, that is- Oh my god, that is. I mean, that's Zoro, and then Sanji, and then Nami, and... Oh my god, you're right. <laughs> you got the, the Luffy disease. <laughs> the Luffy. The I need to take care of Luffy disease. Yeah. Inflicted by seeing. <laughs> After a connection with Luffy is, is there, it, like, she gets all the thumbs. <laughs> oh shit, where the part? Oh yeah, here. Now she had no place to go, no food, and suffered from an unnecessary injury. And for what? A strange boy in a straw hat? An equally foolish swordsman and a tangerine-haired girl she didn't even know? What were they thinking? What in their weird way of standing, out, standing up to Bellamy? By coming his personal punchy bags? Being able to take on all that pain meant they had to be strong. Why didn't they fight back? Rose's curiosity and anger stirred like a storm in her mind as she flew towards the sky until she was out of sight. Well, what'd you think? That's <laughs> good. I'm, I'm enjoying it. Okay, good. I just gotta wait for this ad. <laughs> Buy a Tesla! <laughs> it is- what is this? I don't know. Oh, it's, about, it's about not beeping. Oh. Oh, I remember getting those ads on TikTok a lot. No, not me. I smoke cigars. Do you? No. Oh. <laughs> I, was, I don't know if they, like, I don't know if the author drew this. Smoke if they cake. did, I love this little art. I don't think they did. So I can't read Japanese. Because it has the little, the thing in the corner. So I'm just like, if it's their art, wouldn't they have a different... Kind of watermark, maybe. I mean, I, I can't it read Japanese. That's like a website. Oh, you think it might be like AI? I don't know. We could check. Yeah, I mean, I would look up the website, but the only thing that we can make out is numbers on here. Well, you could reverse Google image search. Oh, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> we do that later. Back to the story. Back Chapter to three. reality. Oop, there go gravity. <laughs> Freedom is a state of mind. <laughs> the world is a complicated and unforgiving place. Dominated by endless seas, man could only unlock so many, um, so many mysteries that the waves cover. But none can honestly know all. People are so foolish enough to take on this ocean. People, okay, hold up. So foolish enough to take on the ocean are all looking for something: wealth, fame, power. But what are those with no desires? What are they left to do? A long time ago, unknown to anyone, it is rumored an entity known as the Creator of the Seas crafted rare vessels of magical powers. These vessels are known as devil fruits. The average person knows nothing, if not very little, about what they are or what they do. 
What we do know is whoever eats one gains powerful special abilities, but with a catch. The sea itself will turn against you. Once consumed, the person will no longer be able to swim and instead swallowed by the sea. One particular devil fruit was once locked away in a vault hidden in the land of Mer- Did we ever discover what the pr pronunciation of this? No, I, I even watched the show in dub and I don't remember how they pronounced <laughs> No, I'm not gonna- hold up. I gotta- Geoys? Hold up. Geoys? I know. I'm not gonna say Geoys, that's not Geoys. <laughs> I know for a fact it is not Geoys. I feel like if I call Cameron and ask him, you'll probably know. <laughs> uh, should I try? I'm Googling. Okay. Very easy. This, this is gonna be like obnoxiously easy, and I'm gonna. Cry. I mean, to be fair, all the words that I've said are, are really easy. Well, you just have a little trouble. Pronunciation. Dyslexic. Do you call me dyslexic? No, it's Mary Marie Joie. There we go. Walked away in a vault hidden in the land of Marie Joie. It had been purchased for an incredible amount of berry by one of the celestial dragons for their possession. A fruit named the Haunt Haunt Fruit. When eaten, the consumer gains the ability to be a gate between the real world and the spirit world. They didn't want the fruit or its powers, though. No, they wanted it for decoration for their trophy room, as an item to show off to guests. Oh shoot, we oh. still gotta pick a name! Oh shit, alright, what, what, what's her name? <laughs> okay. Oh gosh. So okay, we have Rose. We could go with plant name. We could go with Rose and Lily. Ooh, Lily I was thinking Iris, but, oh. but we can go with Lily. Mm. Oh shoot. Now we gotta look up flower names. Oh shoot. Magnolia. How the fuck you spell it? <laughs> M-A-G-N-O-L-I-A. Magnolia. Alright, I can pronounce that. We can do that. We gotta expose you to big words. It's Thank you. Ther <laughs> therapy? <laughs> yeah, anyway. Little Magnolia de Beauvoir would stare up at the various double fruits that adorned her father's study with great curiosity. Fruits possessing magical powers? Surely that couldn't be real. What else was out there in the world? Were there other things like magic fruit? Mermaids? Dragons? She would never find out, though, as she was forbidden to leave her family's estate. One day, Magnolia was feeling a little more confident than usual, and decided to get closer to a closer look at the so-called devil. She was finally growing tall enough to be able to reach them if she stood on the desk. Such strange colors and shapes. But when the the one that caught her eye was mo the most was the haunt haunt fruit, for its twisty form and peculiar pattern. She had never heard exactly what it did, but the mystery was far too tempting. Magnolia. A gruff voice shot through the room, scaring little Magnolia, making her fall to the ground with a loud thud. What did I tell you about sneaking into my office without permission? With a strong fist, he took hold of Magnolia's delicate little hand and whacked it hard with his cane. The pain was excruciating, enough that it had, been ingrained in self it had ingrained itself into her memory. She screamed in pain and repeated her apology until her father stopped. Oh shoot, are we just Rose? Hold up, are we Rose? Or do we have to? I think is she Magnolia just our old name. Yeah, I guess Magnolia is her old name. Well, dang. Rose is nice though. Yeah. Hey, lady! A booming voice brought Rose back into reality. Hmm? You closing your tab or what? You've done nothing but sit there and stare at nothing. The bartender spoke up, annoyed with the woman. I think you've had enough. Rose sighed, took her glass, and downed it in one gulp. Nah, I'd like another. Suit yourself, but this is your last. The woman scoffed. What are you cutting me off for? Please, you're a mess, lady. I can't even- I can't have you passing out my bar. I can handle my liquor just fine. Her words slurred as she took her tenth glass of whiskey for the night. You don't know anything about what's good for me. Whatever. The bartender, the bartender chose not to waste any more time on the woman and went back to serving his other customers. Idiot. I'm sick of everyone telling me what's good for me. 
Ruth mumbled to herself as she threw down her drink. They don't get it. To be fair, you don't look too good. A new voice entered the atmosphere and took a seat beside the drunk woman. I think you should take his advice. Rose's vision was blurred, but she could make out a familiar shade of moss green. Hey, I know you. She tried to fix her vision and make out the man with who the man was, ordering a drink next to her. I think I saw you earlier. You're the guy who got his hand ass handed him on a silver in a on a silver platter by that bastard Bellamy. The swordsman ignored her. And has he chugged down some sake? He wiped his mouth. His cheeks were tinted from alcohol. What were you thinking? What's your story? The lady slouched back against the bar with curiosity. What's yours? The man asked. Rose, Rose could start to get a clear view of brown eyes staring back at her. You don't look like type. You don't look the type to be wasting themselves away in a place like this. Ha! <laughs> she chuckled. My story's a long one. You'd be just like me by the end of the night if you chose to stay and listen to me. Please. I can handle my liquor a lot better than you can. You raise the glass and finish its contents. How about you start with your name? Rose, the woman answered, her head growing heavy. Her eyes dizzily continued to wander the swordsman, starting to enjoy what she was seeing. His skin had been tanned from the sun and possessed a rugged stare that had seen plenty of blood in battle before. What's yours? Zora. His shirt was unbuttoned slightly, giving Rose a delightful... <laughs> I'm sorry. A delightful sneak peek at the toned chest underneath the Zorro. I might have heard that name before. Her mind drifted in and out of the fog until her memory brought back a time she saw a wanted poser a few years ago in a distant town. Ah, uh, I remember. Pirate Hunter Zorro. You've made quite the name of yourself here in the East. I recall your poster. Rose couldn't help but giggle. Spirits were quite furious with you. Huh? What are you talking about? Spirits? I think... Lean... Rose leaned over and took a hold of the pirate hunter's hands. We should continue this talk on the dance floor. What do you say? <laughs> She's, she stood with a seductive smile. Come on, pirate hunter. I'd like to get to know you a little more. Zoro thought for a moment, but the sake answered for it. Why not? Damn it! Couple... It should have been me! <laughs> <laughs> it technically is you. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> the couple stumbled over together to the band playing a lively song. The Scarlet, the Scarlet Lady threw her hands around her partner as she started to sway and move to the music. So you're a bounty hunter, huh? Not anymore. Zora placed his hands around the thin waist of the temptress. Part of a pirate crew now. How ironic. Predator becoming the prey. What led you down such a path? Rose teased, her body rolling and strumming with the guitar seductively against him. I met someone who's going to help me with my help me reach my goal. He spun the lady around. While a bit sloppy, his dancing wasn't that bad. And I'm gonna help him reach his. And what's his goal of yours? She pulled herself closer to the sailor, brushing herself against his stiff chest. Ooh. To become the- <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I just see something in there. So I'm like, I'm like going into the zone and you're like, ooh. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> to become the world's greatest swordsman. He spoke with such confidence it sent a chill down Rose's spine. A similar chill she got when she ran into this man earlier today. She turned around, leaning back against the pirate, letting the pirate move, letting, against the pirate, letting her body continue to move mindlessly to the music. Her hips bobbed in time to the sound of the drums. The world's greatest swordsman. What an unbelievable goal to have, she laughed. What's it like to have such an impossible goal? Who says it's impossible? Zora spoke in a serious tone, spinning the woman back to me, hit him face to face. What are your goals, since mine are apparently so funny to you? Relax, Zoro. I just find your dreams a very, a very alluring quality about you. Her face became close enough to almost brush lips with his. My dreams were lost a long time ago. Bodies only continue to dance closer to one another as the alcohol took full control of the couple's actions. Zora started to get lost in the mysterious look in Rose's eyes as the two swayed together. It was a hypnotizing glare that sparked him into a dreamlike trance. Why'd you let your dreams go? His, his breath was warm against Rose's face, intoxicatingly sweet with sake. Ha, if, as if I tell you'd run away from me, that's the last thing I'd want right now. Try me. Rose bit her lip. She could hardly contain herself around yeah. this man. He had a charm that was just so enticing. She pulled his ear closer and whispered, 
Then why don't we get out of here? What do you say? She grinned. My crew is leaving in the morning. I'm not abandoning them. He declined. What I'm hearing is that we have all night. She caressed her hands around his face, brushing a teasing thumb against his lips. Trust me, I don't want to keep you from your dreams, but I would very much enjoy the opportunity to know what that feels like again, just for a moment. You're a little too drunk, Rose. Zoro smiled, removing her gentle hands. He looked down at her with caring eyes as he held her tightly. Perhaps, maybe when you find your dreams again. For now, how about we go out and get some fresh air? Rose froze. The music froze. The world froze. Everything froze. I... He doesn't want to. Why is he acting nice? Come on. I know a good walk... A good walk on a nice night like this always cheers me up. Zoro took her, her hand, but Rose reflexively took it back. No, I... I don't think that's a good idea. No, I can't. The noise. Hmm? Why not? You're starting to look pale. Come on. I think we need to get you outside. I can't. The noise. Don't bring me back out to the noise. Rose fell into a fearful trance. Zora's voice growing faint and further away. She practically threw herself at this man. And he just and he was more worried about her. Why? What does he want? This isn't right. Does he have alternative motives? Maybe he was going to rob her. He was a pirate after all. Maybe he was going to take her outside and kill her in the alley. In any case, no, he could actually care about her, right? No man can. Men don't care about a woman like that. The tornado anxiety consumed and took over her mind. And continued to take over her mind. Here, sit down. Huh? Suddenly, the twister ce ceased. Sit down. Sober up. The, the storm settled. And Rose was met with a sweet and comforting image of a man with hair smiling at her from the, ben the park bench. I think he might have blacked out. Don't worry. It's safe here. How do I know you're safe? She started and sobbed. I blacked out and he carried me here? Yes. He answered. I wasn't about to leave you like that. Someone could have hurt you. I can handle myself. Rose crossed her arms in stubbornness, but more so to warm herself as the cool breeze blew through her hair. I can fight just fine. No one could fight blacked out from booze. Zora rode his eyes. Seriously, you're one sad woman. Excuse me? Rose became furious, but suddenly was overcome with excruciating. As quickly as she could, she ran to a nearby bush as her whiskey was thrown out of her body. Humiliating. Too humiliating. Have to disappear. She gasped as a plant as a hand placed itself on her back. Get it out. Screw you. <laughs> she continued to throw up her drinks again and again. God damn it, aren't you grossed out? Why are you still here? Nah, I've had my fair share of bad nights. I know what it's like. He helped the young woman back to her feet and guided her back to the bench. So, what's brought me here so washed up? I told you who I am. Your turn now. Rose threw her head back and stared, stared up at the stars in frustration. You don't actually care about my story. What good will it do you? Nothing. Just trying to help a dumb girl who seems lost. Zora leaned back and joined Rose in admiring the sky. I've met people like you before. Haunted by something. Numbing the pain away with alcohol. I used to be someone like that, not too long ago. Spill. What is it? Fine. I'll tell you. Rose's anger was rising from all the confusion and irritation flooding her mind. Zora was just another person who thought he knew what was best for her. Who did he think he was? He just met her just a moment ago and was talking about her like they were friends. No one does something like that without selfish motives. She smiled a, she smiled a tired but sinister grin. I'll show you who I am. Take my hand. Without another word, the swordsman fearlessly took took hold of the woman's hand. Knox. Zora's body then grew cold as a sudden wave of something unnatural took over his body. He couldn't describe what had just happened. It was a gravity increased so intensely his body would be crushed any second. He opened his eyes after a great effort and sat frozen in a state of awe. The world had fallen into an ominous darkness. Several disturbing voices echoed out the trees, laughing, crying, howling screaming look around this is who i am dark clouds loomed around them phantom eyes glaring from the haze what is this this is the spirit world rose spoke Zoro pivoted his attention back to where rose had sat next to him on the park bench her eyes glowed a chilling red i eat the haunt hop fruit i have the power to cross into the spiritual plane the haunt hop fruit spiritual plane Zora's heartbeat grew faster from the supernatural pressure. Tell me, Zora, 
If you had to suffer in this world every waking moment, wouldn't you want to drink yourself until you were, until you were numb? Do you understand? I. Zoro could hardly speak from the oxygen slowly leaving his body. He choked, starting to suffocate. And tell me, Zoro, her voice echoed. Tell me why I hate the real world so much, that I hide in a horrid place like this. At least here, people are honest and true to who they are. They have nothing else to lose. Finally, the dark blue sky of stars returned, and Zoro gasped for air. He was desperately breathed to get oxygen back into his lungs. Isn't it frightening? Powers like this existing in the world. Rose's eyes returned to their natural state. I see. Zoro slowly regained his composure. That was pretty intense. This is it. This is where he'll run, she thought. Instead, quite the opposite took place. Consoling dark eyes stared back at her with compassion. I think understand. You think you're trapped. What? I gotta admit, having to deal with something like that, I can't begin to imagine what that's like. Why isn't he running? Why is he still here? <sighs> I, I guess I'd probably go inside too. You sure have it rough. Why is he smiling at me? Rose was so drawn aback by this man's reaction, she had grown speechless, and she had done unthinkable and revealed her literal demons to him, this guy she'd only met not even an hour ago. And yet, he still gives her sincerity? Who was this strange man? How could a normal person face hell itself and smile? Listen. Zoro spoke up, rubbing the back of his neck, carefully picking his next words as he knew he was not completely sober. I know life itself seems bleak. I get it. There are times where it feels feels as though the world itself has turned its back on you, even though you could be even though it could be the most difficult obstacle you could face, you can't give up on yourself. Just who are you? Rose's hands became fists in her lap as she desperately tried to hold back tears. Who are you to tell me what I feel? What I showed you is just a fraction of what I endure every day and walk in this stupid earth. Zora's eyes widened at the sight of tears falling from Rosa's face. I'm a complete stranger, a sad, sad stranger. Faith in humidity. Oh, shut up. I'm not telling you how to feel. He rested a comforting hand on the sobbing woman's shoulder. Stop crying already. Yes, the world sucks. Some days you want to get up, but you can't. Rosa. <laughs> Hold up. What? <laughs> no, I just had to stop. Because in my brain, I'm just like, oh god, what's going on? Yeah, back down. I, I know exactly what's going on. But it's like, you know, I need that break of immersion. Yeah. <laughs> Never back down, number one. Never give up. <laughs> <laughs> That's the speech I feel like is being given right now. <laughs> uh. Never back down, number one. Never give up. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Okay, hold up. You can do it, man. Unless Wait, you want me to read. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I'm enjoying this. I am enjoying this. Oh, I'm converting people to my favorite authors. <laughs> Rose stared slack-jawed at the moss-haired pirate, cheeks stained with her tears. His face bore so much determination. How? She subconsciously asked. Moved by the unspeakable momentum of his eyes that could budge her cold, dark heart. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's Why? So funny to me. Uh, the, I love, I think it's funny when people describe their, like, their hearts like a cold, dead heart. I just think that's hilarious. I'm glad you I thought that was hilarious, because when you said the word determination, the first thing I thought of was Undertale. <laughs> I love we were on oh. different wavelengths. <laughs> oh no, I was thinking about like, the audio used the indomitable human spirit memes. What? Oh my gosh, I gotta send you those. Yeah, no, nothing I've... makes you feel like living than those memes. Sometimes I get sad and I, I watch them and I'm just like, no, no, genuinely, genuinely, those get me through it. You need to send I, me I will the send shit. You, I will send you a thousand. Yeah, meanwhile, I'm gonna keep so sending good. you the Josh edits. So I am so sick of them because <laughs> it's not only you, it's my sister. Anyway, uh, continue. Well, <laughs> I fucking. Uh, that is something you'll have to figure out for yourself. You need to find your purpose. Once you do, don't ever let go. Hold onto it tightly and eventually lead you to peace. Trust me, alright? You, you said you used to be a pirate hunter. Spoke under her breath. Is that why you became a pirate? You found your purpose? Well, I knew my purpose before all that. I happened to. Be it happened that my idiot captain gave me the push that I needed to get on the right path. 
There's no one else up there quite like him. I see. Rose sniffed. Then sat up straight for wiping her eyes clean. For some reason, the stars looked a bit brighter now. Well, I can easily say that I've never met anyone like you, Zoro. Ha, <laughs> good. After a laugh, the swordsman stood back to, back to his feet and stretched his back. You have a place to stay tonight? No, not exactly. They kicked me out. No surprise there, he snarked. Hey, watch it, Mosshead. The redhead rose. Rose a middle finger. But that insult suddenly triggered the pirate. And he yelled back with a sharp teeth. Don't you dare call me that. You hear, or I'll cut you to pieces. Whoa, did I strike nerve? The woman laughed out loud. No. The Zoro blushed from embarrassment. Also, from hearing the woman in red laugh for the first time. Chill out, Mr. Swordsman. I won't say it anymore. Although, it is really cute seeing you get all mad. She teased, rising from the bench. The blush then spread across Zoro's face. Whatever. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he averted eye contact to the woman. See, come on. You stay on our ship now until you... For now, until you're well enough. We leave at dawn to the other side of the island. We could hang around until morning. At least there you could pass out safely. Yeah, wouldn't want any other swordsman coming along while I'm blacked out. One's enough for me tonight, thanks. One crazy ghost lady's enough for me. Watch your tongue, Mosshead. I said don't call me that. And two for two. Yay! <laughs> well, what'd you think? Are you gonna ask me what I think after every chapter? Well, well, we're wrapping it up here, so what, what, oh, okay. what's your no, overall thought? No, I do, I do. I do <laughs> enjoy that. I really... Are we spinning a wheel? Yeah, we're gonna spin a wheel, obviously. I'm very excited, I'm very excited. I'm... Yeah. I, I, there are two that I'm hoping for. Is it Three. the Usopp one? <laughs> no. What? But... The Usopp one is not one No, 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 no. Let me look at the wheel one more time, and I'll... <laughs> two or three. Maybe right. four, depending on... Yeah. Even though I love this book and everything, I hope it's not the next one that we read again, because um, we need them to update a bit more before we... Because yeah, we yeah. only have, like, one more chapter to read. We can do a ten-minute episode. <laughs> yeah, a ten-minute special. Okay, okay. Let me look at the wheel. Alright. Because I gotta... Oh, Alright. God damn it! Alrighty. Okay. Here's our lovely wheel. Let me hide their suggestions. And when not. Let's see. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Let me make sure I got everything. Hmm? Uh, we don't have a Sanji X reader on this. Wait, we don't? It doesn't look like <gasps> it. Oh my god, I just abandoned my husband. I'm so sorry. I can't believe you'd let this happen. I put Dosan on there. I just. <laughs> Alright. Should we do a different Law X reader? No, we can gonna... just throw Law back in. I mean, Law is still on here. It's just the, the oh. wake up book. I mean, I don't know. Could do a different one. Add, <laughs> have two laws. Yeah, like wait, hold on. Law. I do. Hold on. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Just the <laughs> logs reader again. Yeah, but I'm, <laughs> I really like the book that we're reading, so we'll do a different one if it lands. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. I think I'm good. I'm excited. As, okay, as long as it's not Maybe the Zoro X reader. Yeah. As long as okay. it's not the, the Zero X reader. We'll zero. It. Sorry, you're zero. I can't spell. Oh, sh <gasps> okay. That wasn't what I was hoping for, but I, I'm still content with. What? <laughs> Wait, did you just say you're not content with this choice? No, I am content. I'm. It is not my first choice, mm -hmm. but it is definitely the choice I'm happy with. Oh my god! I just realized we don't have Reader X Shanks. What are you talking about? No, it's here. <laughs> <laughs> it's right there. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I was looking at Shanks that it's earlier. <laughs> Have you seen this show? Wait, hold on. <laughs> this is not the right time or place to, to me. I think, I think I keep sending you Buggy X Shanks on TikTok. Yeah. I and mean, then fucking I'm... Mihawk X Shanks too. Yeah, yeah. Me Shanks and, and Shuggy is what it's called. Wait, just, just repeat. What was. <laughs> Shuggy? Sh Shuggy oh my. and me shanks. Oh my god. Is that like a word? I was expecting the word shuggy for shanks x buggy. Like shrug. Yeah. Gosh. <laughs> that would be laugh. I didn't think it was that funny, but oh. I'm glad you got a laugh out of it. 
Yeah, I'm 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 so used to like quote unquote like normal ship names like Sarsan and um, Alu and whatnot. I was not expecting Dougie. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why that got me. <laughs> but uh, it is. Yeah. Were you somehow. wait? I thought you were about to say that's so funny. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, gosh. Well, uh, well thanks for joining on this. I guess next time you come on here, we'll find a lovely Bowser X Luigi, and hopefully find one that isn't listen mature. Oh my God! I really, I beg to every god that is out there that it's not mature. There's a lot that's listen mature, dog. No, I'm so anything fluffy ever. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sometimes I'm really tempted. If it wasn't 8 o'clock at night, I'd like scream into this mic. Like, Just do that in the car tomorrow like... when you remember this no. recording. <laughs> no, but I really liked this one. I really did. To be honest, I was really. I, I mentioned Sanji if and adding Logs Reader because that's their other two books. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, maybe we'll get those. <laughs> Well, I gotta warn you about what the- Cause you don't really like mature stuff. Well, the law I, I one- I like mature stuff, but I just need it to be written in a certain way. And okay. I really like the style of writing in this. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Alright, so, but with the law one that they wrote and whatnot, it, it's basically like- it's Very basic, mature. Spice? No, no, like the spice that the, the last chapter of the book. It's a little chapter treat. 18. No, like chapter- it says chapter oh, 18. Oh, okay, cool. All right. How <laughs> dare you correct me? I did my research. <laughs> and then the, the Sanji one has a little sprinkles throughout it, but then the, the main the main buffet is at the end of it. The main buffet. That is so funny. <laughs> 5, 13, and 16? Yeah. Feel a little spice, dog. <laughs> That's it. Let me add some spice to it. <laughs> What is the word? Uh, two hours and eighteen minutes. Yeah, do I, it's worth it. I wish, I wish I knew the word count. I'm sorry, they don't really do that on Wattpad unless the author specifically puts it at the end. I know. Just message them. I'll like put it on the board. They're like, how many words is this book? Oh my gosh, this this is numbers. Oh my gosh, yo. Sorry, I'm looking at the story <laughs> rankings. It is like. It's number six for Sanji. Yeah, that's how I found it. Seven stories. Yeah, that's how I found it. I mean, that's how I found Passion of Pirate. It was like number one. I'm like, ooh, I, I like number one content. <laughs> but uh, but anyway, thanks. Thank you for joining me on this one. Uh, I'm glad we got to like you get to look at my book and like not my book. I mean my favorite book and be like, this is act. This is good. <laughs> So, I enjoy reading the others. Yeah. But like, like, you have some complaints with some of them, with some of the writing or some of the choices and whatnot, so I'm glad that you like this one. No! I don't know what you're talking about. Girl. Girl. <laughs> Girl. <laughs> well, anyway. Uh, in my description is a- Okay, I don't- <laughs> I'll look at that in a second. In my description is a bunch of links, but limited, like, uh, including, but not limited to, my Twitter, Instagram, the Discord server, and my the person that made my profile picture, my banner, and my PNG tuber. Uh, my good old friend Gummy goes for Woo! Not. Gummy! Okay, Gummy! Also in the description is the, is the link to this book, so please go support the author. They're amazing. Give them a follow. Tell them that you love them, but not like in a weird way. Platonically. Do it platonically. Parasocially. Yeah, and if you guys have any Wattpad suggestions, I have a little form which I'll include in in the description of pretty much like now until future videos yeah. and whatnot. Of if you guys have a favorite book you want me and Jolene or someone else to look at, put it down there, and I'll, we'll look at well, it then. and whatnot, and maybe criticize it or enjoy it. Who knows? But uh, anyway, my name is Phoenix. That was Jolene, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.